Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Paper Mario TTYD. And last time, we pretty much finished off as much of our business as possible. We have obtained all of the star pieces, all 100 of them. All, uh, let's see here, um, <clears throat> 6 times 7, uh, that would be 42? 42, 42 Shine Sprites with all of our party members upgraded to the max. We've also obtained every single recipe. However, we're still missing a couple of badges and a few tattles. That is because they are nestled in the final chapter of Paper Mario TTYD. And we have a full roster of items. I mean, not all the way, because there might be some items in the chapter we may want to collect. Plenty of shooting stars and HP drain, which is... I'm going to try and save that for the actual final boss, because it can be pretty tough. And... Yeah, things are looking pretty good over here. Now, which partner are we going to take with us? Well, we started with Goombella, so it's only fitting that we um, go into the unknown with the party member we started off with. Even though I personally would have picked, like, Dino or Vivian or somebody else like that. Maybe even Bobber, just for the chance of the funny uh, British accent stuff, you know? So... I do want to preface this a little bit before we actually start it proper. Um, let me see my equipped badges here. Okay, this is uh, looking very good. I have Power Quake too because I have two Quake Hammers stacked. Wow. <laughs> wow, dude, that's nuts. Um, I want to preface this by pointing out that a lot of the enemies in Chapter 8 are also encounterable in the Pit of 100 Trials. So if you want to see the tattle logs for those, uh, I believe it's bonus episode 4 that you'll need to look up. So, we're, I'm still going to show off some of those enemies while we go through the chapter. It's a pretty long chapter, though. You've been warned. So, without further ado, let us present the final Crystal Star. Uh, it's all come down to this. Hurry now, Mario. Hold aloft the last Crystal Star. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. I still can't believe this playthrough is, like, almost twice as long as the Paper Mario Let's Play. Whew. Man. And, yeah, we're also entering with kind of a dark color scheme with Mario, because if you combine the Wario and the Luigi emblems, uh, you get the Waluigi clothes, which is a very nice Easter egg. Waluigi was definitely a, a more prominent character in the GameCube era than in any other era, arguably, especially the era where... Waluigi was mysteriously excluded from Mario Kart 7. Look! The door! Oh my god! Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, and, uh, yeah. That's seven, alright. That last one is, like, kind of a very light purple. I, I don't know if you guys can tell that, but, like, that last one's a really light purple. I didn't get that vibe from the final Crystal Star. Final Crystal Star looks whitish to me, but I mean, guess they go with what they got. And yeah, that is a very dark looking portal there. Yeah. Hey, at long last, the entrance to the Palace of Shadow has been opened. Uh, before Princess Peach falls victim to that fiend, uh, before he takes over the world, you must rescue the princess and stop this cataclysm. Come on, Mario. Without further ado, uh, now that we've already got Goombella there, I think I can swap to a party member that'll actually help us out with the battles coming up. Uh, I would arguably recommend Yoshi Kid or Vivian. Uh, we'll start with Vivian, though. Uh, I get the feeling she might be somewhat familiar with the with the area. You know, Palace of Shadow, Shadow Sirens. Could just be a coincidence, but what do I know? At any rate... Chapter 8, and Chapter 8 is just called The Thousand Year Door. So, if you're wondering why these episodes have been using the abbreviation TTYD this entire time, this would be why, because we're probably going to call this episode The Thousand Year Door, because I like 
titling episodes after the chapters when it's like the first episode in the chapter, you know? I don't think I don't think we did that with the original Paper Mario Let's Play funny enough, but we're doing it here. Uh this place is unsettling, but we have no choice. We have to get in there and save Peach before things get any more out of control. Let's go, Mario! Alright, so without further ado. So Final dungeon, final chapter of TTYD. Oh boy. Is it longer or harder or more dangerous? That, by the way, here's a hidden stopwatch. I don't know, I might find some. I might just use it in the next enemy encounter to be honest, but I don't even know. I think I think the enemies here no longer give star points because of my grinding in the pit of a hundred trials. Yeah, so anyway. This is a Swoopula. It's an enemy that's returning from the original Paper Mario Chapter 7. I pretty, I think they have more or less the same stats, even though they are found a chapter later in TTYD than the original. They have the life-sucking abilities of Fuzzies, unlike the regular tackle attack that a Swooper, or... Swooper? Swooper, yeah, the bat enemies are called. And we have enough badges that we can literally just finish them off in a single jump attack. Actually, even if I was one attack less, it still would have been doable. So I do have access to a badge called Bump Attack, which would enable me to instantly take care of these enemy encounters. Uh, matter of fact, I think I may have to call upon that badge because, I mean, I mean, let's let, let's face it. Um, we are not going to have to really. Uh, worry about experience and I'm only gonna try and show off the enemies like one at a time because th like I said this dungeon is already oh I had bump attack but the enemy encounter still took place interesting interesting um all right I guess we'll try the stopwatch here because one of the swoopalas has an ice storm and that can freeze you and that can be annoying and it worked on all of them, so I would say that was uh, money well spent if we actually spent any money on the stopwatch. What an interesting start, using that random stopwatch to actually do something. Yeah, the bump attack is supposed to instantly destroy enemies if they don't yield star points. But these enemies don't yield star points, so I don't know why the bump attack didn't work there. It's really strange, unless there's a glitch with the... With the Palace of Shadow, where all of the enemies are immune to bump attack, even if they don't get good experience? I don't know. Kinda strange. Um, let me double check if I actually have the badge equipped. I should? I literally just equipped it, so I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, what? The enemy is supposed to instantly be destroyed if it runs into you, but for whatever reason, that is not the case. That's definitely strange, but I guess we're just gonna brute force our way through here. We have so many badge points from the Pit of 100 Trials grinding that I have Flower Saver and Double Power Plus on everybody. Yeah. It's unfortunate that the life sucking doesn't work like it does in the original Paper Mario, where if it latches onto you, you just rapidly press the A button and you'll mitigate damage, but I guess if it's only one attack, it's alright. So I would say that that attack is harder to deal with in TTYD. I wouldn't even try to super hurt. So if the bump attack, for whatever reason, doesn't work here, we might have some problems. But I think, oh yeah, over here it doesn't even matter because uh, we're gonna run into one of those few enemies that aren't found in the Pit of a Hunt Trials because it's a certain variant. And we have a four shooting star, so we're probably gonna make use of that. Oh. This enemy, though, you're probably already familiar with, because it showed up in the original Paper Mario, but really, it's shown up in a lot of Mario games. I believe first appeared in Super Mario Bros. 3. That's the Dry Bones. We ran into Dull Bones all the way back in Chapter 1. Um, yeah, Quake Hammer would be really excessive right here. I think we're just going to use Super Hammer, but... Yeah, Dry Bones are an upgrade over the Dull Bones, in the sense that... They aren't defeated instantly when you dwindle their HP to zero. They're still going to be able to fight. Ooh, nice double super guard there, though. But, yeah, the only way to instantly defeat a Dry Bones, or rather finish it off, is to either use a Fire Attack or Bobbery's Bomb Attack. 
I want to note that when it comes to Vivian, her fiery jinx will count, but for Shade Fist, it only counts if it's the burn effect after the fact that finishes off the uh, dry bones in question. So since the enemies don't give star points and bump attack doesn't work, I guess we're just going to have to try and avoid them. Alright, so this is what I was talking about. Um, hopefully I'm right in the middle and I don't get prematurely attacked. Because I'd rather do the title log entry as we get closer, but we dealt with bullet bills and bill blasters in chapter 5, and now we're going to run into the more advanced versions. The bombshell bill blaster? Yeah, B-Bill Blaster, which is short for Bombshell Bill Blaster. And there's the Bombshell Bill, of course. 10 HP and 4 defense is a lot to deal with. Uh, but these were enemies in the original Chapter 8 from the original Paper Mario, so they're just carrying that tradition over for the most part. Play Hammer would be very tempting here. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to do it, just because it's going to do a lot of damage. Not quite finish them off, but you can use a uh, yo you can use Yoshi Kid's gulp attack to handle that. We do still have a little bit of the Merlovely going on, but yeah, not the best time for that to show up, all things considered. Because the Bill Blasters don't attack, although sometimes they can uh, aim upwards, which is kind of funny. So bombshell bills are different from the original in the sense that they have defense, three HP and two defense. But here's the tricky thing about the Bombshell Bills in particular. When you fight Billet Bills in Chapter 5, they have 2 HP and 1 defense, which is still exactly enough for you to be able to finish them off with your Super Boots. But with the Ultra Boots, 3 HP and 2 defense is really awkward because it means you're only going to do 2 damage. And they're going to survive with 1 HP if you don't have any extra badges. And yes, that is pretty annoying, which is why we're going to take advantage of the Shooting Star we just got to finish off all of the enemies on screen. I'm wondering if any of them give star points. Probably not. Oh, the Bill Blasters still give some star points. Well, I guess we can relish in that detail. No, can't we? Anyways, moving forward. Uh, okay, I remember this room. This room is going to be a spiky room. I don't really think we need Goom... We're not going to need Goombella for a little while. And I uh, don't think uh, Vivian will be much help here, but I don't know. Uh... Oh, that is bad. That is bad. Believe it or not, we might be able to use Coops here. Literally, the badge spawning in or on top of the bed of spikes. That is just... That's just bad. That Swoopula walking right into my first strike, though, that's less bad. At the very least, we should actually level up from a boss encounter eventually. Alright, barely got that. This badge is all or nothing. Uh, if you hit the action command, your attack will go up by one. If it fails, well, it goes down to zero. And now we only have one badge left, and that's going to be the companion to the PFD down, which is PFD down P. It's also a badge that I'd be tempted to equip if I were you. So, yeah, we can grab some of those coins, but we got to be very careful here. Got to watch out for the spikes. Thankfully, you get, like, a bit of an advance warning. Oh, apparently if you touch the spikes even from the side, it still counts. Well, that's annoying. Especially with the bats swooping around like pests. Like they like to do. Alright, we barely made it through there. That's alright. Alright, this section... Uh, do we get coins for jumping over the fire things a bunch of times? in TTYD. I'm not sure. Uh, it might be only in the original Paper Mario. But gosh darn it, I'm curious. Also, it seems to be pretty difficult to time this, so... So, I don't know. It might not be possible. I mean, it doesn't seem like it's going around faster, so... Alley-oop. alley, -oop. alley, -oop. alley -oop. Actually, oh! That Easter egg is still in here, although it's a little long to do it. I don't think we're going to do it with all of them. That, that would take a little too long. Uh, oh, better double check if I have ice power. I should have ice power, so why don't I see ice power? Really? I forgot to equip ice power? Jesus. 
Alright, so this enemy is the Phantom Ember, which is uh, the third variation of the Ember or the Lava Bubble. We're gonna kill it one hit with Ice Power, obviously. It's basically a combination of the two because it has a lot of HP and a lot of attack. Uh, 10 HP and 5 attack, if I, as I recall correctly. That was some rather unfortunate timing, though. You know what? We're gonna get Dino. I mean, we can't jump over the fire with Dino, but we can at least, like, try to move faster over here. And yeah, there's an item in there. I knew there was. A boo sheet. Very useful. The Phantom Ember dropped a uh, Fire Flower, but that is not an item we're really going to need. For this section, uh, use Vivian or Tube Mode, but I would recommend Vivian more to go under the high fire bars, and over the low ones, you just jump over. If not mistaken, this should be the room... Okay, I believe this is going to be the room where we fight the first of, like, five bosses in this dungeon. It it's going to be nuts, so... This boss is going to be a throwback to the Red Bones fight from Chapter 1. The Dark Bones. Yeah, yeah, none shall pass by. Let those who would disturb her sleep fall into the depths of endless darkness. Now, one difference, though, is that the Dark Bones will actually be roaming around, whereas the Red Bones just stayed in the same place. Although this kind of makes the Dark Bones easier to track down in a way. Kind of. By the way, I don't know if Flurry's uh, Gale Force will actually work here. Uh, it might. But anyway, we'll go ahead and encounter the Dark Bone. And of course we're going to run into uh, all of the Dry Bones as well. You're probably wondering what we're going to do here. First of all, let's tattle the, the Dark Bones because this is the only place you can tattle them is in the Palace of Shadow. But believe it or not, this isn't the last time you can tattle it. That's a Dark Bones. It's the baddest of the Bones game. Max HP is 20. 5 attack, 2 defense. That's a lot. Otherwise, it's basically just a stronger version of the Dry Bones or the Red Bones. It can actually spawn other Dry Bones. just like, And the Dry Bones can do that as well. All of the Bone enemies in this game can spawn other variations. But anyways, to finish off the Dry Bones... You can use either Art Attack. Actually, you know what? Let's show off Supernova, because we acquired it at the end of Chapter 7, and this is actually a really good time to show it off. It's actually a really simple special move. You just spam the A button a lot. That's all you need to do, and you might hear me clacking on the A button a lot. But the damage potential is quite high. It goes all the way up to 15, and it's relatively easy to perform. So, yeah, you don't even have to do that much to get... To, to do enough damage to defeat all of the dry bones, right? So it's not that big of a deal. Ooh, that attack is fast, though. Uh, but at any rate, you do want to try and finish off the dark bones quickly after you do this. Probably not that hard to do, though. Didn't even have to do a spin jump. And hey, three star points. I mean, that's not terrible. But, yeah, there we go. Took care of that, and we got the key. The palace key. Course. Yeah, but just letting you know, this is going to be a long dungeon. And that, while that's like the first boss encounter, I would say that that's not the first major encounter. But hey, we got an Ultra Shroom at least, so I guess that could be alright. Oh, we're going to have the freaking Bombshell Mills again. And these encounters are for the most part a waste of time, but we do get a pity star point every time. We're not going to get star power because the audience is full of dull bones. Dull bones, they don't like giving Mario star power for whatever reason. So try to be in the middle. Okay. And... Bam! There we go. That's a pretty good thing you could do. If you get it in the right position, uh, using the Ultra Hammer here is really good. Cool. Because it's 6 damage to the front and 3 to the back. Uh, if you don't have any extra attack badges, it would be 2 to the front and 3 to the back. Which is still really good, because, like... They only spawn enemies that don't give star points anyway, so you may as well just try to knock them out ASAP and move on with your life, I feel. So, yeah. Anyways, I think this is a pretty good time to use... Zest T to replenish 20 flower points. Oh, yes. 
Because it might be a little while. We might have to go through some more enemy encounters. It might be a little while before we level up. We should level up after the next boss encounter, though. If not, be really close to it. Especially if you run into enemy encounters like this, which actually makes it tedious because, uh, yeah. Ooh, ice power and all those extra attack badges. So close. So close. But you know what? We have this nifty little move called Power Shell, and it's really cheap. It does a lot of damage. So that worked out fantastically. Thank you. Thank you kindly, Coops. Yeah, it, hopefully we're going to see all of the party members get some use in this chapter. Maybe not Miss Mouse, but hey. We'll have to just keep chucking through this and see what, what. Because I should try to avoid the enemies. I don't know why I keep fighting them. Alright, get in position here. Should be good. You have to be in a very specific spot, I find, to be able to, like, go in between the bullet bills like that. But this strategy right here is just, like, it's immaculate. As far as I'm concerned. So. Oh no, I freaking failed it. Dang. That's what the all or nothing does. Uh, well, if I failed it, I may as well go for the power quake. With a flower saver, it costs five flower points, which is only one more than the cost in the original Paper Mario. But it's still really good. So, you know. We should be able to finish off this guy. Yep. And now it's just gonna be like two enemies, it's not that big of a deal. Actually, a funny thing you can do is you can actually use Super or Ultra Hammer on the Bullet Bill to hit the cannon. And I kinda wanna do this just for the hilarity of it. Yeah, give it a taste of its own medicine. That's pretty nifty. Um, I'm not sure if they're immune to Bobbery's uh, bomb attack though, by the way. Uh, I know, I think they're immune to fire, so if they're immune to fire, they might be immune to Bobbery's Bomb as well, unfortunately, so I probably wouldn't try that. It's also one reason why I haven't been using Bobbery a lot. Might be seeing a lot more of him after the next boss encounter, though. Um, so I also, I, I want to see if, why Bump Attack isn't working real quick, so like... Yeah, okay, Bump Attack literally does not work in the Palace of Shadow, and I have no idea why that is. Yeah, it's, it's really weird. Alright, we will take advantage of Power Shell once again. Finish them all off. Easy peasy lemon sweet. Um, I'm not sure if Ms. Mouse can steal an item from an enemy that's, you know, fire or full of spikes. It's probably really risky to try it. I can't believe Bump Attack doesn't work in the Palace of Shadow, though. That is just annoying, and I don't know what. And we got a Jam and Jelly, which will complement the Ultra Shroom we got earlier. And we got the P Up, D Down badge, which we do want to equip. I could try to wait until, um, well, we just do this, and I'll be alright. Thankfully, I planned ahead. I knew I was going to keep those badges, so... I made sure that every other badge is one I want to keep, except for return postage. I'm not too sure about that one. I'm not sure about the usage of it. But anyways, uh, Goombella should be fine. Like I said, we're just going to have to ignore the enemies for the most part. Because there's only... the only enemies so far that give star points. Oh, this road. Okay, so this is similar to a puzzle from the original Paper Mario. You have to follow where the torches are lit. And you have to do this several times, but since the pattern is fairly obvious, you just go where the torch is lit up and not where the torches are unlit, eventually you will get through these series of rooms and you should be just fine. So I think it's down two and then I think it alternates. I think we're going to have to go up and then down. It takes a little bit of time, but it's not exactly... Oh, no, I guess it's up twice soon. I'm not sure if that makes the pattern simpler or more complex. Uh, uh, probably a little bit of both. Anyways, bottom one is good now. And thankfully, we're not going to have to back backtrack through this series of rooms unless you miss something and you try to come back in the post game. Which, if you decide to do that, God help you because there is no way, no instant uh, return pipe or whatever to get you back to the entrance. So, but. On the bright side, 
the Palace of Shadow has no star pieces or shine sprites. You will have obtained everything before you come here. So, the only thing I can think of that you'd be missing would be, like, an item or something like that. Or a badge. But, thankfully, the badges are put early on here. So, that's not too bad. Oh my god, we get out of one weird room just to find another one? It's huge! I mean, it's like an underground city, right? What is this place? Yeah, it's pretty funky. Anyway, there isn't that much we can do here right now, but hey, Bobby is going to get some use. Because these Chain Chomp statues, well, they're a little deceptive. You can actually blow up the Chomp Head to turn them into pipes. Go to the background and hit these switches. There's actually two of these. So, we're going to go ahead and hit one, and we're going to hit the other one as well, but... We're not going to be able to do anything with the boat panels until we take care of the next boss encounter. It's probably also where we're going to end this episode. It's just going to be one of those breaks, so... That uh, should be alright. And... We're also going to have the, in it, the encounter with a regular Chain Chomp. We encountered Red Chomps in Glitzville. Now we've got regular Chain Chomps, and they have a lot of defense. I think they have four or five defense off the top of my head, but thankfully we have just enough attack power that we can finish them off with an Ultra Boot Spin Jump. And they give one star point! That's pretty neat. So that gives that gives hope that some of the enemies later on here might give star points as well. It's worth pointing out pointing out that even if you grind in the pit of a hundred trials before coming here, which is recommended for the most part, um, some of the later enemies will still give a little bit of star points. And um, there are so many boss encounters here that each give like thirty or more star points. You're probably still going to level up a couple times. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. I do want to give a fair advance warning though that the final boss does not give star points. You will get the one pity star point. I don't know why the developers decided to go for that, but that's just uh, the state of things. And I don't know why heart blocks are like all of a sudden really cheap. I don't know if you noticed, but the heart blocks in, in late chapter 6, chapter 7, something like that, Started to go all the way up to like 20 coins a pop. Now all of a sudden they're back to 10. I don't know if this was the developers regretting putting a cost on heart blocks in the first place. Because it, it doesn't make sense. First of all. Or they just feel like having a cheaper heart block is good when you're in the final dungeon. And you're probably going to have to be doing that a lot more often. To be fair. Which is a possibility. It is unfortunate we can't easily go back to ZST to combine the Ultra Shroom and the Jam and Jelly that we get to make more uh, Jelly Ultras. That would have been nice, but that is neither here nor there. Uh, let us keep progressing because we have to get a key from the next boss encounter to move on. Oh, before we do that though, we got another new-ish enemy because I technically encountered this in the Pit of 100 Trials. Uh, this is a Dark Weezard. We haven't encountered a regular Weezard. That's because the regular Weezard is a Pit of 100 Trials exclusive enemy. This has two, 10 HP and 2 defense. I think it has like 5 attack, but not that much defense. We easily kill it. I probably could have killed it with a regular Ultra Jump. Wow, 2 star points? They give more star points than Chain Jumps. I'm actually surprised. And we got a freaking Thunder Rage out of it. Alright, let's go. Might try to save that for the final bosses. I don't know. Shooting Star is better than Thunder Rage, but for some reason I like Thunder Rage more. I guess it's just the idea of summoning a lightning storm is kind of cool. There we go. And, you know, in the original Paper Mario, uh... Actually, let's swap to Dino, and... Yeah, Gulp is cheaper than Power Queen. Yeah, I think that's good. Thankfully, I, I, I'm pretty confident that we're going to level up after the next boss fight. And we are also looking pretty good on time, so... So far, so good, I would say. Bye, boom. Alright, knock out the coins. And let's just... We're going to have a lot of hallways here. I'm hoping that I don't get blindsided here, because I do want to change up my badge setup before the boss fight starts. There should be a save block right before it. I don't know, I'm 
gonna, I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do my setup now. Because we're gonna be doing a one-on-one -on -one boss fight, and usually when that happens, I would rather unequip the badges I have just for the sake of it. Um, we don't need Ice Power for the boss fight, but I think I'm gonna keep it equipped just so I don't forget about it. Uh, Jump Man is good. Power Bounce is good. Zap Tap isn't gonna help. Uh, all of these badges look pretty good. I'm actually tempted to try and put Feeling Fine on, though, because of, um, the boss is gonna have a Breath Attack that can poison you, and I would rather not deal with that. But if we're only gonna have Jump Badges, honestly, I don't even think you really need Power Jump. The Spin Jump, Spin Jump is just so busted. So, yeah. Feeling Fine on Mario, at least. Not enough. We're not gonna have enough for both, but... Right. And if we have a leftover badge, I guess power jump might be okay. You never know. And let's go in with uh, Camilla. Might have one more hallway. Yeah, okay, we wind up having one more hallway, but it's alright. And see, this is why I didn't unequip ice power. I had the right idea. Alright, let's go ahead and do a safety save just in case. And this might be a blast of the past, as if it wasn't already. We just had a Chapter 1 throwback. How about another Chapter 1 throwback? Who are you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're doing it again. No one's disturbed me here in Aeons. Who dares defile this sacred place? Hey! Isn't that Hooktail? We totally beat it before. What's it doing back? What? You destroyed my precious younger sister! I wondered why she had it written recently. Quake in fear, mortals, for I am Gloomtail. I will avenge my sister by taking your lives and then dying on your bones. Oh, no, no, no. So yeah, not only did we just figure out that Hooktail was apparently a female dragon, but who cool me, uh, Gloomtail! Yeah, even harder version to... See, here's the thing, though. If you actually watch bonus episode 4, where we do the... We finish off the Pit of 100 Trials, the secret boss is a harder version of these tail enemies. So... Yeah. If you do, if you do what I usually do, where I do hook tail in chapter one, obviously, and then I do the pit of hundred trials, and then do the final chapter, this would might be a bit of a step back. But don't let your guard down. Gloom tail can be pretty hard. I would say the hardest boss encounter thus far. It's actually a step, or he's actually a step up over Magnus 2.0, if you can believe it. 80 HP, eight attack, and two defense. Yeah, he's not playing around. So his breath has a chance to poison you if you don't have Feeling Fine on, but I do, so we don't have to worry about Mario getting poisoned. If your party member gets poisoned, which I don't think will happen if you block the attack, but if your party member gets poisoned, you can just swap out to another party member. It's not that big of a deal. At any rate, I usually like having Vivian for this fight, because there's actually another attack that Gloomtail can do that can be pretty bad. Uh, we are going to do power lift, though. That just feels like the recommended course of action. Ideally, attack over defense, because the breath attack will pierce defense. You can only reduce the damage with, like, a guard. And even then, not by a lot. So, prioritize those. Extra defense is still good if you get it, but... Eh, plus two, plus two, that's about average. So, we will take that. And breath attack first. Yep. I find that Gloomtail almost always goes for the breath attack first. It could be an AI hard code thing. Alright, I think... Uh, let me double check my items real quick in case I have a power punch. Uh, I do not. Okay. Uh, let's do go for power bounce. Alright. Uh, that's an easy way to knock out 30 HP. I, another reason I like using Vivian for this is because if you chain your Shade Fist, you'll have a consistent burn attack effect going on. Gloomtail is a little bulky with HP, so having consistent damage like that is pretty good. 
Wah, you are tough meat, my little tasty morsels. But how will you fare against this? Yeah, that's pretty rough. That actually did a lot of damage. Uh, I think I'm going to do power bounce and then maybe like heal with Vivian or something like that because that was pretty bad. We're doing a lot of damage with power bounce though. He's actually almost dead. Wow, I'm kind of shocked. Uh, this might be slightly wasteful, but I'm kind of tempted to go for a Lactus Bump on Mario. Full, it'll be full HP recovery and a lot of recovery on flower points. Are we going to see that attack from Gloomtail? That's what I want to see. Otherwise, this fight's going to be incomplete, obviously. Ugh, you are not the easy prey you appear to be. I would never be able to show my face again if I was bested by you whelps. So I will show you the true extent of my power. Oh, boy. So, Glimtail is about to use his Mega Breath attack, which isn't going to kill me, but when else am I going to show off Vivian's Veil? Yep, there we go. So, it's similar to Bow's Out of Sight from the original Paper Mario. The one downside is that it uses up both turns. But yeah, Mega Breath, Mega Breath is purely a damaging move. I don't think it does any stat ailments for what it's worth. Oh, so that's how it works. Well, I guess it is similar to Out of Sight. I don't know. Maybe I've just been using it wrong. I don't know. Anyways, uh, I think we can just go ahead and do a spin jump to finish him off. Well, now we're going to do it for sure. Let's go, more lovely. For, that's, oh, his, his freaking head covered her up. That's insulting. Bam. No! Is it true? Can I expire? 23 star points? Are you serious? Didn't even get enough to level up. Well, see, now I'm just salty. But, um, thankfully it looks like we do have a little bit of extra time. I can actually, uh, knock out some of those fireballs outside, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Eh, it's going to require changing up my badge setup. Actually, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and swap to a badge setup where you do have multi-hitting attacks. Don't want to spoil why, but eh, it might have to do with another boss fight. We're going to have to do uh, sooner than you might think. And actually, um, Quake Hammer, or rather Power Quake and Fire Drive could be pretty useful for that. Um, and I want multi-bounce for the, um, yeah, this is looking pretty good. And, I mean, we're about to level up, and we're going to upgrade badge points, because I'm not going to upgrade HP or flower points ever again in this playthrough. Anyway, we got the star key. It's kind of an unusual key, isn't it? Yeah, there's a good reason for that. So, let's go ahead and go to the left here, and... Yeah, we have ice power, so I only have to do, like, two of these at worst. I saw at least two, so we're going to go ahead and do those. We're going to level up, go and save up, and when we resume, we will be back at the uh, the watery area with the boat panels. Uh, keep it up, uh, keep the simplicity on that. I don't really care about using up my flower points because we're about to level up, obviously. Coops, because Coops is cheap. In terms of flower point cost, not really in terms of battle usage. I don't think he's that cheap, to be honest. So. Yeah, that's one. We'll go ahead and grab the other. I mean, I'm glad it worked out that way. I just didn't think Gloomtail would only give 23 freaking star points. That just goes to show how ahead we are right now. Because Gloomtail normally gives 30. Like a chapter boss, even though this isn't even close to the end of the chapter, funny enough. But... Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. So, we're gonna get the level up. Go ahead and upgrade badge points, of course. Probably gonna fiddle with the badge setup in between episodes here, but... Oh! Mario became a superstar! Next battle, Mario's crowd is they can't... Ooh, that is some good timing. Yeah, we're level 30! Based. See, that... That right there is how you end an episode. Actually, you know what? I think I'm just gonna go go back to the area and end the episode that way instead of um, 
Because we still have a little bit of time, but yeah. So, we managed to defeat the first couple of boss fights here in Pass of Shadow. We still got about three... Actually, that's three? Not counting the final boss. So if we count the final boss, there's actually six boss fights in this chapter. Which is pretty impressive, because the uh, Bowser's Castle in the original Paper Mario Chapter 8... It had a lot of boss fights, but I don't think it had six. And one of them was optional. So, yeah, this is actually a pretty good step up. So, whether you think that this Chapter 8 is better than the other one, or vice versa, it's probably going to boil down to how much you like boss battles and stuff like that, I would say. Heart block over there. So the save block should be over here. Okay. I believe this is going to be a pretty good spot to end off. Uh, I want to have Vivian in the party, because she'll be useful. Actually, uh, she's down on HP, so... Let's get her healed up. Not that it's going to cost a lot. We have more coins than we know what to do with. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and, uh, uh... Save right here. And next time, let's play Paper Mario TTYD. We make, we're going to try and make some more progress through the Palace of Shadow. We're not... I don't think we're going to reach the final boss, but... It's looking like this might be a trilogy, <laughs> so... Yeah, next time, hopefully we're going to make a lot more progress here, and probably going to do at least another boss fight or two, maybe even more. We'll just have to wait and see. So stay tuned, and see you next time.